In case the leaks and high-profile presentations that dropped over the summer didn't make it clear enough, AMD's recently released Zen 4 platform is aiming to compete with Intel for the title of the world's fastest gaming CPU. As we'll see in this video, the Ryzen 7000 series has a myriad of legendary promises to deliver on. They include claims of higher power delivery per watt, improved architecture, astronomical increases in single-core performance, and continued dominance in the multi-core arena. Without any further delay, let's get into it. New platform, new processor design, and some familiar features. Do the chips live up to expectations? The advancements AMD has made in GPU and CPU technologies over the last half decade are truly remarkable. Five years after the release of the original Ryzen CPUs, AMD takes a major step forward with its fifth generation processors. With this step comes a big transition in platforms and adopting new technologies. The Ryzen 7000 series, codenamed Raphael, starting with the socket, moves away from the AM4 micro-pin grid array to a LAN-based network array format, similar to the sockets that Intel has been using for several years. For AMD, the design of socket AM5 in the LGA1718 form factor was motivated by a desire to improve power delivery and management to the CPU and provide optimal power efficiency and voltage regulation state monitoring. Let's talk about how this new platform will integrate current technology. Power delivery wasn't the only opportunity provided by the socket redesign. This new platform created an opportunity for AMD to integrate current technologies and lay the foundation for next generation innovations. This is also not a half-hearted approach. AMD has stated that it intends to support the AM5 platform through 2025 and beyond. To ensure this path, the new platform will support DDR5 RAM and PCI Express Gen 5.0. To maximize performance with DDR5, AMD introduced a feature called AMD Expo. Not to be confused with an AMD Enthusiast Gathering, AMD Expo or Extended Profile for Overclocking is a one-click memory tuning feature, similar to Intel XMP or Extreme Memory Profile. Expo provides users with a simple and stable solution to optimize memory speed speed and timing for AMD. For Zen 4, this optimal speed is 6,000 MHz, a big jump from Zen 3600's 3 MHz sweet spot. Now you may be wondering about DDR4 support in all this memory talk. Unlike Intel's Alder Lake, AMD Zen 4 severed ties with DDR4. We'll get to that point later, but it's important to remember when we talk about the technologies that AMD is and isn't integrating into the Ryzen 7000 series. Speaking of integration, AMD is finally including an integrated GPU with its main series desktop CPUs. At the same time, we have seen Ryzen APUs released after the main series of CPUs and mobile chips, which, along with Radeon graphics, the Ryzen 7000 series is the first to ship with RDNA 2 cores. This is not a replacement for a discrete GPU. The iGPU helps with tasks like video encoding and decoding, freeing up a dedicated GPU to do the heavy lifting elsewhere. The RDNA 2 iGPU also supports HDMI or DisplayPort connections, depending on which the motherboard manufacturer chooses to include, which can come in handy for those unfortunate times when the GPU decides it doesn't have any heavier lifting and needs an alternative display connection to solve your problem. The last detail we need to discuss before we get into the chips themselves are the motherboards. More specifically, we need to talk about the chipsets. The new AM5 motherboards come in four versions, X670E, X670, B650E, and B650. The X670E and X670 motherboards launched with the announced Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, while the B650E and the B650 motherboards will launch sometime in October. Let's break down what all those numbers and letters really mean. The X series of motherboards are intended for users looking for maximum power delivery and overclocking headroom. In contrast, the B-Series offers access to most of the benefits of the new platform while remaining budget conscious. The E or extreme variants of the X670 and B650 motherboards will offer PCIe 5.0 support for both storage and graphics, while non-E motherboards will offer PCIe 5.0 lanes strictly for storage. If you're worried that non-E motherboards will become obsolete soon, don't worry just yet. At the time of making this video, there are no G 
CPUs on the consumer market that use PCIe 5.0, including the recently announced NVIDIA RTX 4090. With the inclusion of support for the feature on e-variant motherboards, AMD could be teasing a PCIe 5.0 connection for its upcoming RDNA 3 Radeon GPUs, but that's pure speculation at this point. Platform aside, let's briefly talk about some basic ways the CPUs differ from their predecessors. While a direct line can be drawn from the Ryzen 9 5900X to the Ryzen 9 7900X, the Ryzen 7 7700X is slightly different. Historically, we have seen X800X and X700X SKUs within the Ryzen 7 family, but an X800X version is currently missing from this build. Since AMD's naming convention places the 7700X in the X700X line, we'll compare the Ryzen 7 7700X to the Ryzen 7 5700X. The AMD Ryzen 7 7700X is an 8-core, 16-threaded CPU with a base clock speed of 4.5 GHz and a maximum boost speed of 5.4 GHz. Comparatively, the Ryzen 7 5700X is also an 8-core, 16-threaded with a maximum boost speed of 4.6 GHz. Regarding the maximum boost clock, the 7700X is 2 GHz faster than the 5700X. This comes with a small trade-off. The 7700X has a higher thermal design power of 65 watts versus 105 watts. This is worth noting because thermal management will be a bit more important on the 7700X. The AMD Ryzen 7900X, like its predecessor, has a 12-core, 24-threaded design. But like the 7700X, it also makes a huge leap in speed. With a base clock speed of 4.7 GHz and a boost clock speed of 5.7 6 GHz, the 7900X supersedes its predecessor by 1 GHz at base speeds and 900 MHz at boost. The 7900X also sees a generational increase in thermal design power from 105 watts to 170 watts. The Zen 4 series as a whole sees this increase in power and an increase in L2 cache size. Across every AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPU, those numbers doubled the previous generations. AMD Ryzen 7 7700X or Ryzen 9 7900X? Which should you go for? Even with the quirks of a new platform, the Ryzen 7 7700X and Ryzen 9 7900X are pretty good options for the middle of the Ryzen 7000 series product stack. With incredible clock speed gains, single threaded performance, continued dominance in multi threaded environments, and simple RAM tuning tailored to AMD's experience with Expo, as well as the adoption of PCIe Gen. 5.0 and DDR5, the Zen 4 lineup looks to live up to AMD's promises. However, there is a looming question in this evaluation. If you were to buy one of these processors, which one is right for you? If you're looking for value per dollar for gaming performance, I'd highly recommend the Ryzen 7 7700X at this point. In most single-threaded performance scenarios like gaming, the benchmark showed minimal delta difference between it and the Ryzen 9 7900X. In most cases, performance was also achieved at a lower wattage. However, if you're doing something that takes advantage of multiple threads, the Ryzen 7 7700X may crash, but the Ryzen 9 7900X is an absolute monster, although this performance came at the cost of additional power and heat consumption. In other news, Samsung wants to produce 1.4 nanometer chips in 2027 and advances in U.S. factories. The company wants to achieve mass production of 1.4 0.4 nanometer transistors and triple its chip manufacturing capacity by 2027. To this end, the South Korean giant is building yet another foundry in the U.S. Demand for transistors is expected to increase, with processors and other components being used in cars, servers, artificial intelligence, connected home items, appliances that use 5G and, in the future, 6G. To handle all this, Samsung bets on factories in the U.S. It already has one in Austin in Texas and is building another in Taylor, Texas. In addition, the company has three foundries in South Korea, its country of origin. Samsung's path to 1.4 nanometers, the process of making a chip, also called lithography, concerns the distance of the transistors, expressed in nanometers, which are billions of a meter. If this distance is smaller, it is possible to put more transistors on a chip of the same size, thus increasing performance. Another advantage of bringing transistors together is to increase energy efficiency. 
efficiency and consequently reduce consumption. For battery intensive devices such as smartphones, this means more time away from the wall. The Korean company plans to mass produce second generation 3 nanometer chips in 2024, while the 2 nanometer lithography will arrive in 2025. Finally, in 2027, the company should reach 1.4 nanometers. Samsung has already started production of chips with 3 nanometer lithography. In this respect, it has surpassed its main rival in the industry, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, also known as TSMC. On the other hand, TSMC beat Samsung and got the order from NVIDIA to produce the chips for the RTX 40 series graphics cards. They will use the 4 nanometer process. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time.